गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकल क्लास यू कैन ऑल्सो विजिट माई प्ले लिस्ट इन द प्ले लिस्ट आई हैव प्रोवाइडेड ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द टॉपिक्स इन वेरी सिस्टमेटिक ऑर्डर यू कैन ऑल्सो मेक यूज ऑफ इट थैंक यू वेरी मच माई डर फ्रेंड्स एज यू नो वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट मोस्कुलर डिस्ट्रॉफी initially we have gone through a case and try to understand some of the clinical importance and clinical points that has to be gathered and later we have seen two important things in the diagnosis number one is differentiation between myopathy and as well as neuropathy and number two is identification of different patterns of muscle weakness and after this now we will move on to the clinical evaluation as we know myopathy follows the proximal distribution majorly myopathy they follow the proximal distribution of weakness and muscle wasting except the myotonic dystrophy now we are looking into some of the variations we know that we know that most of the time myopathy they follow the proximal muscle distribution of the muscle weakness and also uh there will be muscle wasting will not be there isn't it muscle wasting will not be there but there are some exceptions now now we are looking into exceptions okay so uh for example if you take the myotonic dystrophy not muscular dystrophy myotonic dystrophy you will have the muscle wasting proximal muscle weakness along with the muscle wasting will be seen in case of myotonic dystrophy although it is a dystrophy although this is a dystrophy you can see the muscle wasting similarly we, the general rule is in case of neuropathy there is uh, atrophy isn't it so neuropathy is are usually distal in distribution most of the we know that muscles myopathies are proximal in distribution neuropathies are distal in distribution and in myopathies there will be proximal distribution without atrophy and in neuropathies there will be distal distribution with atrophy this is general rule that we know but exception is in myopathies also okay in myopathies also along with the proximal weakness there may be atrophy one of the example is myotonic dystrophy similarly in the neuro uh, in the neuropathies similarly in the neuropathies there will be distal distribution most commonly but distal distribution may not be there proximal distribution may be there in case of spinal muscular atrophy joinal spinal muscular atrophy so these two are the variations exceptions that we should keep in our mind considering the involvement of this is one important point okay similarly considering the involvement of the face tongue palate and extra ocular muscle is helpful in differential diagnosis one point the variations i have explained muscular myotonic dystrophy and as well as uh, juvenile spinal muscular atrophy so they do not follow the exact rule they will alter that means they will vary a little another important thing is in the clinical evaluation you should know about the involvement of the other muscles for example the rare muscle for example face muscles tongue muscle palate muscle extraocular muscles etc this should be also seen don't limit yourself only to the bigger muscles or muscles of limbs and trunk and upper and lower limbs it's not like that even look at the muscles of the bulbar cavity pharynx larynx etc because amyloid diffuse type of muscular dystrophy facial humoral scapular type of muscular dystrophies they majorly involve these particular face and bulbar areas we have already seen the patterns of muscle weakness another important clinical evaluation is tendon reflexes now tendon reflexes are diminished usually in myopathy as we know but neuropathy they are completely lost this is a general rule isn't it in neuropathy the muscle tendon reflex tendon reflex totally lost just like gb syndrome and all whereas in uh, uh, myopathy is there partially lost or they just diminished then fasciculation of the muscle especially in the tongue points to the denervation so what you have to see in the clinical examination is the tendon reflexes okay the 
the reaction of the tendon reflex gives a lot of ideas because tendon reflex is totally get lost so most probably it is a neuropathy okay the tendon reflexes is there partially is there diminished then it may be suggestive of a myopathy now more importantly fasciculation the presence of the fasciculation is very important always presence of the fasciculation is suggestive of a neurological disease okay especially the lower motor neuron disease with atrophy that is called as denervation atrophy when there is denervation atrophy you will have fasciculation just see whether this fasciculation is there or not along with the muscle weakness if it is not there probably it is not a um, neuropathy now another important thing is sensory involvement again sensory involvement is only seen in case of neuropathies okay and uh, in myopathies you don't have sensory involvement at all suppose if there is a fatigable weakness it's waxing and waning type of weakness that means in the morning there is okay but as the time passes the person feels sharp weakness in the muscles so this is waxing and waning type of weakness the next day morning again he is okay so this type of weakness is typically seen in case of neuromuscular junction disorder as we already discussed so that is in case of my uh, myasthenia gravis now if you look into the clinical clues of the diagnosis of the neuromuscular disorders some of the important clues if you see the weakness of the muscle hypotonia hyporeflexia and also flexor plantar reflex suppose in a given case if you get weakness okay weakness may be there in the neural pro neural problems neurological problem or myological uh, myopathy problem so there is a weakness okay hypotonia is also there hypotonia is less likely to be in myopathies whereas in neuropathies lower motor neuron lesion you will have hypotonia weakness hypotonia and also hyporeflexia tendon reflex is lost and even the flexor plantar reflex so now this presentation is more likely point towards not to a muscular dystrophy or myopathy rather it point towards a neuropathy okay lower motor neuron lesion similarly there is wasting okay atrophy is there fasciculation is also there and hyporeflexia is there okay see the difference between the first and second one so wasting is there fasciculation is there and hyporeflexia is there in the first one there is no fasciculation now this actually suggests a disease of a neuropathy this is of a neuropathy origin and this may be a disease of anterior horn cell okay this is probably a disease of anterior horn cell lower motor neuron disease itself the first one is also lower motor neuron but this is more specific in the lower motor neuron we are talking about now anterior horn cell disease where the extra finding what you get is fasciculation okay so usually this is in seen in case of spinal muscular atrophies sma different hereditary spinal muscular atrophy especially juvenile type now come to the another situation where predominantly distal muscle weakness is there just imagine the case predominantly distal muscle weakness is there and peripherally distal wasting is also there hyporeflexia is also there and sensory involvement is also there and peripheral nerve involvement is also there so this suggests towards the hereditary neuropathies this suggests towards hereditary neuropathies now suppose again there is a no case fatigability and fluctuating weakness waxing and waning type of weakness fatigability is there definitely is a disease of a neuromuscular junction now another situation where the proximal muscle weakness is there but bulk is relatively preserved okay key uh, uh, proximal muscle weakness is there but there is no atrophy there is no wasting bulk is relatively preserved reflexes are also preserved there is no much loss of reflexes okay so this particular presentation there is no sensory involvement there is no sensory involvement at all patient is not having pain patient is not having tingling sensation and all those things fasciculation etc now this presentation is most likely suggestive of a dystrophy muscular dystrophies i i hope you got the point similarly clinically what help is 
DMD and BMD, two types of muscular dystrophies, what we have, they are X-linked recessive type. X-linked recessive type. That, that means more commonly they are seen in male boys more rather than girls. Because pattern is X-linked recessive type. Because X-linked recessive, recessive disorders are, X-linked recessive disorders are more commonly seen in boys. Okay. Similarly, other type of muscular dystrophy, for example, is your scapulohumeral dystrophies. Okay, so they are autosomal dominant type. For example, we have got the example of a uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophies, or we have got the example of a amyloid diffuse muscular diffuse uh, muscular dystrophies. So they are basically autosomal dominant type. So dominant means autosomal means it can be seen in both males and females. Okay, dominant means they will not skip the generation. They will be present in each and every generation. Okay. So like that, autosomal dominant types are there. Autosomal recessive, if you want some of the example. In autosomal, male and females are equally affected, but recessive. Okay. So this type of presentation can be seen in congenital muscular dystrophies or psychoglycanopathies. <coughs> These are some of the important clinical clues when you are looking at this. Now, this is a simple interpretation we have already seen, therefore I will not go in detail. What are the similarities between the neuropathy and myopathies? And this part is over. So all the symptoms of lower motor neuron will be there in case of a neuropathy. In general to say, like weakness is there, hypotonia is there, fasciculation is there, decrease of reflexes is there, atrophy is there. Okay, so that will be always there in a uh, lower motor neuron lesion to say that this is a neuropathy. All the symptoms will be there, but there will be some variation. For example, decreased reflexes will be there in myopathy, but a reflexia will not be found. Okay, so all the symptoms will be there, but there is some variation will be there. For example, decreased reflexes will be there in myopathy, but a reflexia will not be found. in myopathy. Is Reflexes are diminished. Okay, they are not absent. They are absent. They are totally absent in case of neuropathy. But when you come to myopathies, you cannot find such a situation that totally reflexes are absent. They may be diminished, sluggish, but they are not totally absent. Totally absent is always a symptom of a presentation of a lower motor neuron lesion or a neuropathies. No, but in case of neuropathy, now you take the example of GB syndrome, Guillain-Barré syndrome or polyneuritis, it's a neuropathy. Okay, as it is a neuropathy, a reflex is one of the main symptoms in GD syndrome. Okay. Uh, similarly, the, if you look into the fasciculation, fasciculations are always more common in the anterior horn cell problem, hence uh, horn, uh, horn cell, uh, anterior horn cell disease. Okay, LMN may occur at various levels, isn't it? It may occur at the gray matter level itself in the spinal cord, or it may be in the anterior horn cell, it may be in the nose, or it may be in the branches of the nose, or it may be in the neuromuscular junction, it may be in the sensory part of the muscle also. But how you can say specifically it is only at the anterior horn cell, presence of the fasciculation. Presence of the fasciculation always suggests that the Problem pathology is there in the anterior horn cell disease, anterior horn cell area. Fasciculation will be there. Okay, uh, that is also called as denervation atrophy. Where fasciculation, why fasciculation is there? That is because of denervation atrophy. Okay, so sometime in the early stages of the myopathy, sometime in the early stages of the myopathy, if it is due to inflammatory condition, see fasciculation will be always there in anterior horn cell disease. Exception is again, again one exception. What is that? In case of myopathy due to inflammatory cause like myositis, dermatomyositis, etc. Although it is a disease not related to anterior horn cell, it is a disease related to muscle, you may find fasciculation sometime. Again, this is one of the variations that you have to remember. Now, but most important is, but most important is, if any of these are there, okay, that any of them is fasciculation, atrophy, 
then comes uh, your um, denervation atrophy atrophy fasciculation tendon reflex diminished okay so if any of these three are present then that is always suggest you of lmn it may be at various level see first you have to identify it is in the lmn level then at what point of the lmn level is okay so the, what place or anatomical site of the lmn that you have to identify but in gross if all these three are present you can say this is the lmn lesion to precise to have a very clear cut diagnosis or say microanatomical diagnosis you have to go further but if these three present one thing is very clear definitely it is a lmn lesion and not upper motor neuron lesion now specifically talking about the myopathies suppose you are specifically talking about myopathies ultimately at the end part movement of the muscle is possible only after the release of acetylcholine although initiation is mediated by the umn and later it's modified by the lmn isn't it if you look into how the movement takes place sabse pehle jo hai upper motor neuron jo hai wo charge karta hai uska inhibitory effect hai lower motor neuron ke upar then lower motor neuron carry on karta hai muscle tak then the muscle action takes place but the last point where nerve comes and meet the muscle so how the nerve is able to stimulate the muscle at the last point that is because of the presence of the acetylcholine neurotransmitter that acetylcholine will be taken by the n1 receptors which are present in the cell membrane of the <coughs> muscle cells and that is how it takes place okay <coughs> okay now when we talk about the myopathy suppose if you say that anterior horn cell is normal if you say the neuromuscular junction is normal but still there is muscle weakness upper motor neuron is normal lower motor neuron is normal spinal cord level normal anterior horn cell is normal okay neuromuscular junction is also normal but still there is a muscular weakness or muscle weakness then it suggests that problem is not exclusively present only in the muscle okay exclusively present in the muscle so this is typically a muscle disease now not related to upper motor neuron lesion or lower motor neuron lesion so we need to know about the muscle structure and second one is we should know the we should know we should able to know the pattern of involvement the next class uh, we will look into the muscle structure and how this will take place till then goodbye don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also please give your valuable comments thank you very much